What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It is yours truly, Fit City, and we finally got the announcement of the Nightmare Cup, the Sylph Arena's next cup for May, May 1st through the 31st. If you find this video helpful, smash a like, leave a comment in the comment section down below, and subscribe. If you haven't done so already, be a part of the Fit City fam. Now let's go ahead and get on to the video. All right, so the Nightmare Cup. Pretty cool symbol there. Can you guess what it is already? You might be able to. What is the Nightmare Cup? Now, first off, you're probably like, Fit City, you've never went over this page before in any of your other best Pokemon for the other cups. Well, there's a reason for this, because there are some rules that we've never seen before. And this is what I'm going to go over. First off, it's Psychic, Dark, and Fighting only. Only three typings, but they're very, very different from each other. Uh, of course, Fighting doing super effective to Dark types, Dark doing super effective to Psychic types, and Psychic doing super effective to Fighting types. Now, here's where things get interesting and has never been done before, I don't think. Legendaries, Mythicals, Sableye, and Metachand are banned from use in this cup. So this this is the first time that we've seen specific Pokemon, Sableye and Metacham, being banned. So you cannot use these Pokemon or else you are disqualified. Now also, you can only use one of each Pokemon species that's permitted in your team. So no duplicates. And then the rest of the arena rules are to follow. So you guys know how these videos go. I pick three of what I think at the top of my head and through what I already know, three of the best Pokemon of each typing. Now I will be doing an update to this video, so make sure you subscribe so you can follow up, see what else I come up with of the best Pokemon of each type. But, so this video isn't very long, I go over the three best of each typing. And first off, we're going to start with the Dark types. Skuntank is already pretty much a beast. We are, we are well aware of how good Skuntank is in the Ultra League. Well, its tankiness does move over to the Great League. And let's go over the moves that makes it so good. First off is Poison Jab. Poison Jab is a very good move that not only does a lot of damage, but it charges up the charge bar pretty quickly. It's got a good energy per turn. It does super effective damage to Fairy and Grass, and it does not very effective damage against Ghost, Ground, Poison, Rock, and Steel. So right away, if you're just going up against a regular Psychic Pokemon, you're fine. If you're going up against a regular Fighting type, you're fine. Or if you're going up against a regular Dark type, you're fine as well. Uh, poison does neutral damage against those, but you are getting that stab bonus because it's going to take its Poison type. So next off is where things get interesting. Po Sludge Bomb, would you want to run Sludge Bomb? Honestly, no. And it's because you have access to Crunch, which is going to be that psychic coverage. Now, here's the thing. Because Skuntank is a dual typing of Poison and Dark, it takes super effective damage against psychic types because of the Poison type, but it resists poison or psychic at the same time because of the Dark type. So it comes out to be about even. It's actually 96%. Let's just say it's neutral damage. So it takes ne neutral damage against psychic types. This is good because Skuntank is super tanky. So actually you would want one crunch to counter those psychic types. Now you want to be weary, and this is why you'll have a second move on your Skuntank. Because crunch alone is not going to be good enough in case you get in a dark type matchup, or if you get in a fighting type matchup. So with that in mind, instead of running Sludge Bomb because it's not really doing any kind of type coverage, run Flamethrower. Flamethrower is a pretty powerful move in PvP, uh, it got its damage buffed. Uh, it charges up fairly well, especially coupled with Poison Jab, and you're doing super effective damage against Steel types. Uh, you probably won't come across any Dragons in this. Well, you won't at all, actually. Uh, fire types, probably not. Rock types, probably not. Water types, you might, and we'll get into that. You could come across a Polyrath, for example. But Flamethrower looks like to be a good, normal DPS move uh, that does neutral damage. Now, you could do super effective damage against a Jinx with Ice. Grass, maybe, if you come across a Shiftry. Steel type, if you come across Lucario. So Flamethrower actually has some good coverage with some Pokemon that you can come across in the tournament. So I think Skuntank is actually a really good Pokemon because it has two moves that you'll run on it that makes it really well. Now let's go ahead and look at its stats. If we look at uh, Skuntank here, follow along with me now. At level 22 with 100% IVs, and I know people have asked, like, why you use 100% IVs? It's just for the best overall comparison. You get the bet you get the idea of how good this Pokemon is based off it just it's maxed out 100% IVs and you can see the stat range. It's a little bit easier for comparison so you guys can understand. 
Um, so at level 22, 100% IVs, 1482, the attack is 124, defense is 92, and the stamina is 153. That's higher than what I'm about to talk about. So uh, that's pretty good. 124 is mediocre. 92 is low, but 153 makes up for it, making Skun Tank a monster. Now, let's go into Shiftry. Now, Shiftry is interesting because of its moves. I love its moves. It's a pretty good Pokemon in the Ultra League, so let's look into it. Razor Leaf does a bunch of damage, and it'll be super effective against uh, ground, rock, and water, so it can kind of be a uh, Polyrath cover just in case, but you could do Feign Attack, it has more EPT, energy per turn, and you're going to cover the Psychic types. So it depends on what you're trying to do with Shiftry, which also depends on what fast move you use. Now of course you could run Leaf Blade, Leaf Blade is by far I think personally the best grass quick move or charge move in PvP, it charges up extremely fast and it does a lot of damage, it does 70 power in PvP as well, it's absolutely insane. Uh, Leaf Blade is probably a must, I would say. Now you could run Leaf Tornado, that's going to decrease your opponent's attack by 20%, meaning they're going to do less DPS uh, over time against you. That could be beneficial in a situation where you're taking a lot of heavy damage but they don't have any shields. Um, and that will also help you if you have another Pokemon to switch out and not take as much damage again in that situation. But it's, it's interesting because Leaf Tornado uh, it's not that powerful. If we go ahead and look over here, Leaf Tornado does a power of 45, and it takes 40 energy, so it charges up pretty well. But there's only a 50% activation chance, so you're flipping a coin. Is the Depending on the situation, I would say Leaf Tornado would be good if you go up against a matchup that's favorable. So not only are you not taking that much damage, but you are also being able to tank even more on top of it. So... Uh, foul play I think should be a must so you can cover the psychic types But if depending on how you want to run your shifter you could run leaf blade for massive shield busting uh, Capabilities because leaf blade takes Hardly any time to power up or you can go with that one step up only take 40 energy instead of 35 and use leaf tornado to try to diminish that attack stat So it's completely up to you um, If you want to shield bust leaf blade if you want to lower attacks leaf tornado, but deal less damage So remember that okay so let's go ahead and look at Shiftry real quick, shall we? Shiftry, Grass and Dark, 15, 15, 15 at 22.5, comes in at 14.99 CP, 136 attack, that's actually pretty high, that's not bad for the Great League, 86 defense, ooh, that's lower than Skun Tank, but a stamina of 140, so that's actually not that bad. So Shiftry comes around to be mediocre in the tankiness department, but does have a pretty good attack stat. Alright, next up is Umbreon, this is kind of a given, Umbreon's a tank, CP's low, uh, you'd run Snarl, Foul Play, and if you can, Last Resort. If you can, Last Resort. Um, and actually, you don't want to run Foul Play. Foul Play only does 70. You want to run Dark Pulse. Ah, yeah. Okay, so it's Dark Pulse, excuse me. Uh, and Last Resort, just for some like neutral damage in certain situations, although you're not going to do that much damage against Rock, Steel, or Ghost. So... But it's going to be a tank, and that's the sole purpose of Umbreon, is to be a tank. So it's at the top here, 15, 15, 15 at 24 and a half, 1496 CP, tax 93, which is low, but its defense is 168, and its HP is 152. So this is a tank, and that's exactly what it's meant to be. It's, uh, you could say it's a shield buster, because it's going to be able to tank hits like crazy. You don't have to use shields yourself, especially in a favorable matchup. You don't have to use shields yourself, you can just literally take the hits and then try to bust your opponent's shields because you're not going to have to use yours. So Umbreon's kind of a no-brainer. Test it though, just in case. Next up's Lucario. Lucario's kind of a no-brainer, especially for the Kingdom Cup. Uh, you'd run counter with Shadow Ball, because Shadow Ball actually doesn't take that long to charge up. Shadow Ball with Power Up Punch because it gives you a 10% boost and attack every single time you use it and it does not take that long to power up. First of all, it's super effective to steel rock, normal, ice, and dark. So you can do neutral damage against uh, Jinx, for example. So definitely a good Pokemon to use and the stats are... Uh, it's okay. Right here at the bottom, Lucario. 15, 15, 15 at level 19. 1467. Um, 146, 92, 108. So 146 is definitely really highest, the highest on the Pokemon that I'm going over. The defense is uh, similar to Skuntank, but the stamina is pretty low, so Lucario cannot handle hits very well. But it's a good Pokemon. 
Next up, Polyrath. This is actually the first time we've seen Polyrath be viable, per se. You could say it was it's viable in the Kingdom Cup now, um, but not very many people talk about it. It's weak to Electric, Fairy, Flying, Grass, and Psychic. And actually, it's not viable in the Kingdom Cup. I forgot. It's not a Steel type. It's Steel that's in the Kingdom Cup, not Fighting. Anyway, I digress. Uh, if you have a Legacy Mud Shot, um, you're, that's ridiculous because you're covering Poison types. And then these not very effective types, you're not really going to run across that. So you're covering Steel, Rock, Poison, Fire, and Electric. If you have a Mud Shot on your Polyrath and it's under 1500 CP, consider yourself lucky. Otherwise, run Bubble. Bubble is an extremely good move. It's actually incredible how good Bubble is. You ever use Azumarill with Bubble? It's insane. So you can run Bubble. Rock Smash just doesn't have that high of EPT. Of course it covers Dark, Ice, Normal, Rock, and Steel, which is fantastic. But you're trying to charge up your charge moves a lot quicker. So definitely go with Bubble, in my opinion. In my opinion. And then you can run up Power Up Punch. We already know how good that is. And then the next one I would say is Ice Punch, just for more coverage. Cover Grass, Flying Ground, Dragon, whatever, right? Just just more coverage. This would be good against, uh, well, actually, you would use Power Up Punch against Shriftery. And then maybe an Ice Punch because it does more damage, right? 50 as opposed to, oh, well, whatever. <laughs> so Ice Punch and Power Up Punch, just give yourself more viability. That's basically why. Uh, you don't necessarily need Ice Punch, but I would definitely have it just in case you come up against a unfavorable matchup and you need to do decent neutral damage. So if you look at Polyrath here, at level 20, 1477, you got 117 attack, which is mediocre. You got 118 defense, it's mediocre. HP of 132, that's a little bit above mediocre, so it's well-rounded, which is good, that's what you want in PvP. You guys probably didn't see this one coming, but yeah, it's because of that Psychic Fighting type. It's weak to Fairy, Flying, and Ghost. And resists fighting and rock but there's one thing that stands out with glade and i knew this right in the beginning first off low kick isn't a bad quick move and its ept isn't too bad as well i would prefer low kick over confusion yeah yeah especially yeah it's it's the ept that's important we have to realize that and it has leaf blade so this only takes 35 energy to power up Meaning, with Low Kick and Leaf Blade, you're going to be firing them off like crazy. And if you save Glade for the end, and you have a shield and your opponent doesn't, let's just say, you can choose either Close Combat or Psychic to get the job done. But, Leaf Blade does neutral damage against uh, Psychic types, against Dark types, and against um, Fighting types. So... You're, you're, you're pretty much good. Uh, Leaf Blade has fantastic coverage in this tournament. Now, of course, if you come against a Drapion, that's any poison type, that's going to kind of suck because it's going to nullify the effects. But, hey, you're trying to shield bust. It just all depends on how you want to use your Glade. But if you save it a little bit towards the end and have one of these, Close Combat or Psychic against um, a uh, Drapion will probably one-hit it because... If we look at Glade right here, 15, 15, 15 at 16 and a half level, 1458. It's attacks 136. It's kind of high, so it's gonna hit like a truck. Defense 113. That's mediocre. But the stamina is 99. That's pretty low. So you want to make sure you're hitting like a truck to begin with, which means you're gonna be firing off leaf blades left and right. Next up, Bronzong because of its interesting typing alone. It's weak to dark, fire, ghost, and ground, but that typing is interesting. Uh, you would want to use Feign Attack because of the EPT gained. Confusion does hit like a truck, but I would run Feign Attack personally. And then Heavy Slam. Heavy Slam is going to cover Fairy, Ice, and Rock. So you're covering uh, Jinx, for example. Um, and you're doing neutral damage against uh, other Pokemon that are either Dark and Poison type, uh, Psychic type. You're doing neutral damage. And pretty good neutral damage, too. Heavy Slam is not a terrible move. And then I'd run Psychic just in case... Uh, you're able to get a one bar move off, uh, like one big move, I should say, off. So, Bronzong is also a fairly tanky. If we look at Bronzong right here, uh, level 23, 1471, attacks 112, defense is 146, which is actually pretty high, and the stamina is 116, which is kind of mediocre. So, it's kind of a tank, sort of not. Um, but you could. It, Bronzong is one of those Pokemon that will definitely throw your opponent off. Next is Jinx, because I've been talking about Jinx. It's weak to Bug, Dark, Fire, Ghost, Rock, and Steel. Resist, Ice, and Psychic. The resistance to Psychics, I think, pretty important. Um, 
you could run Frost Breath. That's good to do super effective to grass types, but not against Ice, Steel, or Water. So this is kind of bad to run, uh, at least for Jinx. I would run Confusion. Only because he might come across, um, well, see, see the meta's so tough with this one. The meta's tough, because Confusion could suck, and then your EPT's not very good. But Frost Breath can suck too, but your EPT's a little bit better than Confusion? Might be the same. What's the selling point for Jinx, and the most important part, is the fact that it has Psy Shock, which is a super effective to fighting and poison, and then it has Draining Kiss. Draining Kiss is pretty good too. It's super effective to dark and fighting. So, Drain Kiss actually does power up fairly quickly, and uh, Psy Shock's pretty good too. Avalanche isn't too bad as well, but Avalanche I don't think has... If you're trying to go up against a Jinx, then you could just simply... Wow, you would need Focus Blast. No, no not really. Hmm. So if your Jinx is up against a Jinx in a mirror match, you just want to make sure your stats are subpar. But Draining Kiss, I think, is definitely important. Um, that will do normal damage to a Jinx versus Jinx uh, mirror match. So Psy, Sh 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 Shock and Draining Kiss, definitely. If you have an Ice Punch, maybe go for it, because it charges up pretty quickly. But if you don't, Psy Shock and Draining Kiss for Jinx. Just to look at Jinx real quick. Uh, 20.25, 1496, 143 attack, which is the second highest on this list. 100, 107. It it's a heavy hitter. Now finally, Gardevoir. Gardevoir, similar to Glade, serves an interesting purpose because of its typing. It's weak to Ghost, Poison, and Steel, so Bronzor would take quick work of this Pokemon. Now, Charge Beam is a very good move. Not only are you covering, like, Polyrath, for example, but it has very high EPT, meaning you're going to charge up Shadow Ball really fast. Therefore, you're doing super effective damage to Psychic Pokemon. Now, the thing is, with Shadow Ball, since it hits like crazy, it is such a powerful move, you can one hit uh, like Lucario, for example, outright. Like this is a very powerful move that charges up very quickly. So a uh, Shadow Ball and Lucario, good night. So you'd run Shadow Ball, and if you want to run Psychic or Dazzling Gleam, it's up to you. Dazzling Gleam is a two-bar charge move in like regular Pokemon Go, but in PvP, it's just one bar. Um, and Dazzling Gleam and Psychic take the same amount of time. So if you think that you're going to have more use with Psychic, go with Psychic. If you think you're going to have more use with Dazzling Gleam, go with Dazzling Gleam. But Shadow Ball is a must. And the stats are the same as uh, Glade. 136, 113, 99. So there you guys have it. Let me know in the comment section down below. Are any of these Pokemon you're going to put on your team? Uh, are there any others that I didn't mention? But I'm going to mention. I still want to hear what you guys think in the comment section down below. Uh, again, stay tuned for that updated video. I definitely do those. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Be a part of the Fit City fam. I think I already said that in the beginning of the video, but hey, never hurts. Uh, smash the like button too. I always enjoy doing these videos. If you guys got any questions, again, comments. And uh, yeah, that's it. The boy Fit Sam sign off. See you guys in the next Pokemon Go video.